This video was produced by Boulder Digital Arts. BDA offers affordable cutting edge classes and workshops for designers, entrepreneurs, and tech professionals. All of their programs are taught by industry experts. And as a small local business, they're proud to have supported Boulder's creative and technology community for well over a decade. BDA's classes cover a wide range of subjects from digital marketing and video production to web development and graphic design. Learn more at boulderdigitalarts.com. Hey guys, uh, my name is Brian. I introduced myself before. I'm from Connecticut on the East Coast and uh, CTO of the Adaptives uh, community there. Uh, we do some client services for people. I'm uh, the lead technical editor of the Sierra Smart Contract Developer Guidelines. I just got some uh, funding from the foundation. And uh, I got into this space as a contributor on the Viper and some of the other uh, Ethereum Python stuff, mostly due to my dislike for JavaScript. So um, just a little bit of an elf in the room. If you guys know the history of Viper, it used to be called Viper with an I, and we changed the I to a Y, and it's a really complicated story, and we don't have to get into it. But the cool thing is it matches our file extension now, so that's awesome. Um, so we kind of leveraged a lot of Python's design goals when we, design, uh, when we came up with the ideas for how we're going to design uh, Viper. So the very first thing we ripped was that you should borrow ideas from elsewhere wherever it makes sense. Uh, so that's why we're doing it. Um, things should be as simple as possible. So we try to make Viper contracts uh, as simple and easy to understand as possible. So it's really difficult to kind of get lost in uh, logical situations where um, you make a mistake and you know you lose a lot of money. Um, so we like to do one thing and do it well. Uh, it's a big part of um, the overall philosophy around Viper. Um, the performance isn't quite on par with Solidity yet, but that's okay because we'd rather be right than be fast. Um, there's a couple other things at the bottom there, but um, so a little bit more into the Viper features that we uh, enable. So the first and foremost, we prize readability over writability. So we don't uh, allow operator function overloading we don't allow um, contract inheritance or uh, things like that that you can do in Solidity. We try to make mis writing misleading code as maximally difficult as possible. Uh, so we don't allow modifiers, things that hide intent like that. Uh, we only currently allow finite data structures. So you can't do dynamic arrays, you can't do strings. Uh, and this limits the ability to uh, have gas attacks against your contract that can be manipulated. Uh, we also are able to provide gas cost estimates right out of the gate currently. So uh, that's that's a really cool thing. You get to understand like what's the maximum bound for this contract um, and you can kind of estimate the costs of your uh, application. So we force function uh, visibility, which was the first uh, parity multi-sig hack. Um, so in Solidity it used to be that um, if you didn't put anything down there for the visibility of the function, it would assume it was public, and that could lead you to lose track of like what is actually what. So by forcing it, we make sure that you understand exactly what the visibility is. Uh, we minimize reentrancy by disallowing uh, calls from functions that you define below your current function. So you can only call functions that have been defined before. Um, this uh, disallows simple recursion in your contract. You can only make calls to previous contracts so you can never get into a loop through that way. Uh, you can do multiple recursion between two different contracts. You set it up in a really complex way, but basically that's really hard to solve and you have to intentionally do that. Um, so, you know, the, one, of the, one of the things was uh, make it as maximally difficult as possible. Um, I have some built-in fixed point types. This is something that Solidity doesn't have. Um, so we'll have exact representation up to 10 decimal points. Um, so you can do decimal point math in Viper directly. We allow labeled units, so you can actually apply arbitrary units to different uh, functions. We have a built-in one for way, so you can know the difference between a regular integer and one that is specifically handling uh, ether. So you'll never mix up. It'll actually throw a compiler error when you go to compile, which is pretty sweet. And then you can add in 
your own custom labels. So you know, if you have like a stock type or something like that, you don't mix uh, values with other types. Uh, we build in overflow protection uh, directly into the compiler. So every mathematical function that happens in Viper uses safe math by default. Um, you can't overflow or underflow uh, using our, our math functions. Does add a little extra gas cost, but we're investigating some optimization strategies where we can prove that it's unnecessary for a certain uh, class of logic, um, but that will require some really deep, heavy optimization uh, later down the road. Don't allow inline assembly, because uh, that's a really opaque way of programming and it's really hard to understand as someone auditing a contract. But if you have a specific function that's general enough, things like EC recover or other functions that are used pretty widely, uh, we'll definitely investigate adding it in as either a pre-compile or a built-in feature. Um, so, you know, come add an issue to our repo. And as I said, we don't allow inheritance. It hides a lot of the functionality behind layers and layers of contracts uh, in different files and um, kind of pollutes the namespace. It makes it really hard to figure out exactly what's going on. And as a bonus side effect, everything's all in one file, direct upload to uh, Etherscan, uh, although I don't think they actually have support for that yet, but it'll make it a lot easier than uh, with Solidity where you have to combine all the things into one file. Um, so if you want to give it a shot, we have viper.online. You can go there and uh, try it out. You can try it, uh, programming. It will compile your contract into the bytecode and ABI you need. Uh, you'll have to take that into a tool like Web3Pi and actually deploy it and uh, use that system. We're still trying to get something that has uh, enough functionality that works kind of like Remix where you can uh, compile something in place and deploy it and play with it that way. Um, so if anyone wants to help integrate that with Remix or with Truffle, uh, Truffle, we're you know, obviously looking for help there. And BarkJS has offered to put it in there. Populous, uh, we definitely want to support that in the future. So um, we'll have more support as soon as our, um, our beta release. So as of Friday, we're going to release our first beta. Um, right now we're in a feature freeze and we're only accepting any bug fixes for anything you find. So go to the... Sorry. Go to the repo and give it a shot, try it out, and let us know what doesn't make sense or whatever. Uh, if you have any design chops, we're currently doing a logo competition. Uh, it's a little late for entries, but you can submit them anyways and see what happens. Uh, and if you guys want to go vote and see what the other people have submitted, you can go vote. You just give a little thumbs up on the entries you like, and you can vote multiple times. And we'll try to use that when we figure out what logo is going to be best for us. Um, we're going to have a lot more documentation bounties coming soon, uh, sponsored by Status, who is sponsoring one of our lead developers as well. And we're going to do a full security audit as soon as we go into beta and we have enough confidence that there's not too much going wrong with it. So if you want to help out, come see me. I'll get you involved. Um, and it's really important because Casper is using Viper directly. So the more usage we get of this uh, of this programming language, the more secure Casper is, which is fundamental infrastructure that's going to be built. Uh, you, that's going to enable Ethereum's future. So this is really important. Any questions? Sure. Um, the question was, could you launch it on multiple blockchains? I mean, any blockchain that uh, integrates uh, the EVM as functionality and this produces direct EVM bytecode. So anyone that uses that, I think EOS does. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, we you can do any arbitrary contract in there. It doesn't have to be RAC20. Uh, probably. Um, so EWASM is a really interesting uh, animal because it enables any contract to come in and write uh, bytecode that can output into EWASM as instead of EVM bytecode. Um, but it remains to be seen what's going to happen with that. So be interesting. Anyone else?
Are you talking about like the Etherscan integration I was talking about? Yeah, so if you want people to trust what you did, it's good to upload it so you can show everyone that like, hey, if you go download this file, you're gonna get the same thing. Uh, and that's kind of what that Etherscan functionality does. Uh, it only works for Solidity right now because they can do it kind of on the fly when you upload. Uh, so we'll have to figure something out with that, but it would be pretty cool uh, once you get it. Yeah, it's, it's basically understanding that the bytecode that was deployed directly came from compiling this contract with this version and you know that, you know, that they weren't lying about it. Anything else? All right. This video was produced by Boulder Digital Arts. BDA offers affordable cutting edge classes and workshops for designers, entrepreneurs, and tech professionals. All of their programs are taught by industry experts. And as a small local business, they're proud to have supported Boulder's creative and technology community for well over a decade. BDA's classes cover a wide range of subjects from digital marketing and video production to web development and graphic design. Learn more at boulderdigitalarts.com.